Council now um, convening the open session of seven, seven or eight, uh, roll call. Councilmember Tucker? Here. Councilmember Alvarado? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Bernward? Here. Mayor Dale? Here. Let the record reflect Councilmember Eugenio is not present. May you please stand for Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the black. Mr. Marie, is there any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, yes, a couple of things, Mr. Mayor. I, I think there was an indication that uh, uh, re referring to uh, what, former councilperson uh, Eugenio, she as you may all know, she took the oath of office for Imperial Irrigation District uh, on, uh, on on Friday uh, and, and thereby vacated her office uh, as a city council person. Uh, so uh, the re record should reflect the four of you uh, and now uh, make up the, the city uh, uh, council. Uh, with respect to adjustments to the agenda, uh, the, the, we ask that you uh, take an action uh, to add uh, an item uh, on the basis that uh, we found out uh, after the agenda was posted that there's some additional cops funding uh, and that that fund and we found that out after the agenda was posted and that funding has to be expended uh, before the end of the year is what I'm given to understand and so we ask that you add as uh, item F11 a resolution to accept uh, that funding. So there should be a motion. Make a motion to add uh, the uh, cop resolution to F12. Motion and second, please vote. Motion passes 4 0. Okay. Turner, is there any action taken in closed session? Uh, reporting out item A1, the council discussed three potential cases of anticipated litigation. Uh, direction was given to council, no reportable action. The council discussed the case number listed under A2. Direction was given to council. The council also um, discussed property negotiations located at 451 West Eaton Road. And terms were given to the negotiator. That concludes my report. Okay, we're going to move on to C1. Matters not appearing on the agenda. If you wish to address the council concerning any item within the council's jurisdiction, please raise your hand. Be acknowledged by the mayor, and at that time, state your name and address for the record. The mayor reserves the right to place a time limit on each person's presentation of three minutes. It is requested that a longer presentation be submitted to council writing. Would anybody like to speak? Yes, sir, please come forward. Hello, I am Christian, and um, unfortunate. Thankfully, there are Imperial Market Days. It's appreciated. However, uh, Section thirteen point eight one, obstruction right of way, it's uh, affecting many members. Of well, some members of of the vendors, and and unfortunately, there's only one hour given. Some vendors even have two spaces, and it's not enough time to to uh, uh, pick up, and then that this code has been put into practice. Unfortunately, there was even some one person in the last Imperial Market Day in October that, that what's it called, that got two citations just because that vendor was not able to pick up. And, well, that's not really fair because us as persons who are vendors and loading and unloading, our Right away is taken away by the truck drivers who are picking up the, who are uh, cleaning up the city after that. And, and our right of way as, as uh, walkers, that's taken away. And so it should be considered at least giving more time because that's not really fair that to only vendors 
uh, that's being applied, but not to to those walking. And also, too, uh, it's not fair that there's no time limit for customers to stop walking around as it uh, as that affects vendors to actually put in vehicles. An accident could happen, and and it will all come as a conclusion to the city of Imperial. It would be its fault because that's not taken into consideration. So it is recommended to amend the one hour to pick up as uh, some vendors have uh, at least two spaces. And and we'll, I, that's, that would really be appreciated because it's not fair that just the city wants to apply the codes and then uh, make it affect the vendors and then get money. So as at least there's already money uh, from vendors received, and especially by sponsors. So that would be appreciated for the vendors to get um to have extra time to load the uh, their merchandise. That will be all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Any else? Anybody else would like to speak at this time? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on to uh, D1, uh, Imperial Public Library Scholarship Awards. All right, uh, good evening, everyone, uh, members of the council, Mr. Mayor. Um, so today we are going to be presenting on the Teen Makers Learn, Play, Create, and Cultivate um, internship program that we have at the Imperial Public Library. As you remember, or you may remember, the library was awarded a grant fund to uh, fund this program. And so these are the new group of interns that we hired this past season. Um, <clears throat> they're going to each have a little moment to shine and explain why they joined the internship and the pro different programs that they've been doing. Um, so if you may remember, the entire goal of this project was to provide an internship opportunity for teens where they can learn social, emotional, and professional skills while providing programming for school and children through makerspace and gardening programs. So this is some, um, something new that we added from the last internship that we did. We actually hired four gardening, intern for, uh, gardening interns. So their main objective was to provide program that was programming that was specific for um, gardening and agriculture in that um, field. So the four makerspace interns that we hired are Eric Arceo, Samantha Lopez, Lily Sanford, and Anel Munoz Vena. Um, unfortunately, Eric Arceo is not present with us today. He was sick, so I will be presenting on his behalf. And then the garden interns that we hired are Yadira Chavez, Paul Garrida, Diego Valencia, and Haley White. So um, Eric actually was supposed to start off today's presentation, but as mentioned, he unfortunately got sick, so um, I will be presenting on his behalf. Um, but Eric did an amazing job during his internship. Um, he says that he applied to the internship because he wanted to foster a STEM interest and passion within as many kids as possible in his community. Um, and Eric definitely proved this. He is a big, um, he's big on robots and robotics. So he partnered with the Robotics Club at our local Pearl High School. He brought out um, the robot, the giant robot that they compete with. And he also brought some other robots for the kids to build themselves and um, get to control as well. And then for his last program, he actually do, decided to do something a little bit different. Um, so he's going to be doing a Christmas tree and ornament decorating in um, light of the season. So that's what Eric's um, doing. And he did, honestly, a phenomenal job this past internship. And next we have Samantha Lopez. I'll let her take the floor on this one. Hi, my name is Sammy Lopez, and I applied to this internship mainly because I wanted a chance to interact more with kids because I personally love kids and working with them, and it like really brought me joy to like build relationships with them, and just work with my community, and just you know have like a better experience in the my work ethic and stuff like that. Um, the one program I was able to do um, was an Indian corn program, which is like a keychain. Um, the kids like this one um, because they were able to just make something that like was their own and make it their own. Um, and then for this month, I will be doing two more programs, which consists of a mug painting program, which you're going to be able to paint um, a mug and then later on take home and maybe drink some hot chocolate with it. 
as well as a picture frame program where they can have their own picture in their frames and just decorate their house and their tree with them, those frames that they will be making. And, yeah. Thank you. Um, hello, uh, I'm Lily Stanford. As Victoria said, I applied for this internship because I wanted to get more job um, experience because I'm a little like under experience when it comes to the working department. I want to improve that. And I also wanted something on my resume to look good for when I want to go to college. And my programs, my first one was the tie-dye program. Personally, I thought it would be a lot of fun for the kids. And when I was little, I used to tie-dye shirts all the time. Don't mind me. <laughs> and then the second one was the Noso turkey. Um, they just, yeah, were able to make little turkeys. And it's similar to the tie-dye program. I did it mainly because of my own experience, and I thought it would be fun for the kids. And the last one I have yet to do, but I'm positive the kids will love it because they're making candy cane reindeer. Thank you. All right, next we have another. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Anna Munoz and the reason why I wanted to apply this pro the reason why I wanted to apply to this program is because I'm hoping to become a doctor. And as a doctor, well, you have to have those uh, um, uh, people skills or like be able to communicate very well and be confident as you're public speaking. And with this uh, with this internship, I've been able to do that. Uh, I've talked to parents, I've interacted with kids, and it's been a, overall a very uh, Learning a very good learning experience, and I already completed my three programs. The first one was a door a door sign, which I pretty much um, bought these wooden uh, signs and I let them decorate it as however they wanted to. Um, the second was a uh, witch hat, and I did this during October, so like during Halloween season, and I thought that they were gonna have a lot of fun, and they did because they got to decorate it, they got to put stickers on it, and they had a lot of fun. And the last one is the parlor beads program and this one is where they use pearler beads and they made keychains with it. Uh, the pearler beads are these things that you like iron and like you can make cool designs with them and so at the end we ju I just turn them into keychains. Um, thank you. Hi, I'm Yaya Travis and I applied to the internship because I thought it would be fun to create programs for teens to enjoy. I mainly work with like 10 to 17 year olds. I really wanted them to gain some interest and have fun. I also thought it would be nice to gain some new experience and skills. Um, my first project was to called Totally Terrarium, because it's like totally tubular. So I built a terrarium. I thought that was funny. Um, we built like little terrariums and like small jars for them. And I thought it was really fun. I think they had fun. Because I got to decorate it too, one of the pictures. And then my second one was a community garden. We made shapes out of clay, and we all put soil, nutrients, and seeds in them. And we built a community garden right out here in the library. You can see it, and it started growing. It's really nice. And then we also built a bee hotel. It, um, we got to teach them like how to like do woodworking, and like it was just pretty fun. We taught them it's supposed to be like a little habitat for bees, so they can build outside their home, so they can like build a little habitat and watch like how bees have like uh have like how they built and like. I thought it was really cool. Good evening, everyone. My name is Diego Valencia. I applied to the internship because I wanted to educate kids more about gardening because I feel like it's such an important aspect of agriculture. And agriculture is like a really big, um, I guess you could say, aspect of our community. And so I just really wanted to educate kids about agriculture. And I felt like gardening would allow me to do a lot of hands-on activities, which I love doing. And all three of my projects were meant to focus more on younger kids, especially since we met with someone who was um, a big help within our agriculture programs. And she said that a lot of the younger kids, they're harder to, like, I guess, work with because they're, like, messing around and, like, going everywhere. But I wanted that challenge, and I felt like I, felt like I could take on that challenge. And so all my three of my programs really focused on the younger kids just to teach them a little bit the basics of agriculture. And so my first program was the Tarkle Garden Bonanza. That's just a catchy name. Um, I made that program with one of my peers, which was Paul. And 
basically the taco garden bonanza was we made mini greenhouses out of cups and out of certain fluorescent colors and we put in seeds those seeds ranged from cucumbers to tomatoes to lettuce and the taco garden bonanza the name comes from the idea of those seeds that you plant you can put them in your tacos so like get lettuce tomato some kids put cucumbers in their tacos just whatever they wanted to put <laughs> whatever they claimed they put in their tacos they could plant and we let them take the little miniature greenhouses home and they could even like plant their own little gardens within their own home the second was the second project was the toolbox planners basically we got two boxes and we made little planter beds out of the two boxes. Two, two boxes had handles and the kids even, were even able to use markers to label their own sections of their, um, like sections of the boxes that they had within their toolboxes. So they were able to take it home and basically have transportable planter beds. The third, the third project was designing garden gnomes. So even though it says just garden gnomes, we also did little ornaments just because it was October 31st. So that was like, a, it's Halloween. And so we made Halloween ornaments for Christmas time that was coming up. And so we created our personalized garden gnomes. And those garden gnomes were to be put into the community garden that, um, the community garden that Ch Ms. Chavez was creating. And that's all. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Paul Garheda. Um, so I applied to this internship because I wanted to facilitate a fun and engaging learning experience for the kids. Um, I wanted, you know, to get some experience with the workforce because personally I haven't had any yet, so it was a great experience for me. And I think the kids had a lot of uh, fun with it. Um, so for my programs, like my compass said, we start off with what I call it the taco garden bonanza. For us, it was more of like a loose interpretation because personally, you know, I don't like cucumbers or carrots or on my tacos. But um, for my next one, I had seen mosaic arts and crafts. So I love because I have three younger brothers, so I love to just like, you give them materials and their imagination, like, it runs wild. It's amazing what they can do with it. So um, it was great seeing them work with that. And then for my last one, we built little mini gar miniature gardens, basically, so garden constructors. Um, we had a good time with that, and they were able to, like, I don't know, use markers and stuff like that. But, yeah, a lot of seeds, and, uh, yeah, great experience. Thank you, guys. Hello, everyone. My name's Haley Wyatt, and I, I applied to this internship um, knowing that I wanted to spread the word of agriculture. I'm a junior at Brawley Union High School, and I am a big part of um, agriculture and FFA. Um, I knew that I wanted to grow my, my time management skills. I wanted to grow my preparation skills, my responsibility skills, and my work, work ethic skills. My first program was a hydroponics, and I know that's a really big word, but it's basically where we did a mason jar full of water and we had a little net at the top where you put a seed in and you grow like lettuce out of. Instead of using soil, you just always have that mason jar full of water. So you don't really need soil. Um, the second program was a worm farm where we had a plastic container, clear plastic container, soil and worms. And the kids took them home and they put compost in it. So they got to watch the worms eat the compost and later on you can use that compost to put in your garden beds. Um, and my last program was a garden village where kids just made a little garden bed with whatever they wanted to put, flowers, vegetables, herbs, anything. And then they got to decorate it with little um, ornaments like uh, no, they, I had gnomes, little houses, flowers, animals and some even the boys did trucks mostly and those are my three different programs thank you Alrighty, so those were all of our interns and all of the programs that they did um thank you again to all of you for listening and they honestly these interns did a phenomenal job um i am very proud of them and all the work that they did and this wouldn't be possible without the funding from the state library so thank you to them right there i got something for you yes the mayor does have a gift for you I want to read one of these lists that you gave me to check out. This is the biggest thing that for for young adults to get in front of councils, people, just like you were speaking, that this is very important. And for some people that have personalities of a mud fence and obviously you folks don't have that <laughs> so i mean I, I think it's important what you're doing and it's beautiful
and, I, and this is one of the things I'm going to miss is getting off this council is, is addressing young adults. I think you guys have done a phenomenal job with kids. And believe you me, the kids someday will remember everything you did for them. And it's funny. You'll, somebody will come up someday and bring it up to you and you won't even recognize them because they've grown up. So it's, it's an important thing in what you did. So I'm going to read this and then I'll do the amount. So this certification is presented in recognition of your uh, completion of the Imperial Public Library team makers um, learn, play, create, and cultivate internship. Your hard work, dedication, and responsibility during your service from June 20th to August 12th, 2022 has earned you the intern scholarship of $500. This project was supported in whole or in part by funding provided by the state of California administrated by the California State Library. So, thank you very much. Uh, Diego? Thank you. I like that too, that's a good handshake. <laughs> yeah, those web handshakes don't work. <laughs> Okay, now you're going to have to help me on this because I'm terrible at this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Y-A-D. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm such a hit. Here you go. Come on. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Haley, come on. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Paul? Come on up, Paul. There you go. Your flash stuff goes to my shiny head. It's not work anymore. Leia? Yeah, Lily? Um. Lily. Lily. Told you. Here, here you go. There you go. See, it started working again. <laughs> and now? Yeah. Come on up here. Are you gonna be a doctor? Yeah. What are you what are you planning on? What what do you want? Oh, perfect. Good job. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. This one I can't screw up, Eric. Oh, Eric. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Smith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Come on down. Okay. <laughs> Parents, if you yeah. want to come take pictures, feel free. Yeah. All right, call ones in the back. Right. <laughs> 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 Would you folks like to get in on the picture? We can Parents? <laughs>
Okay. All right. Let's uh, move on with the meeting. Let's go e consent agenda. All items appearing under consent agenda will be acted upon by the city council in one motion without discussion. Should any council member or other person request that any item be considered separately, that item will be taken up that time and determined by the mayor. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion passes four zero. All right. Uh, move on to action items F one purchase of equipment for wastewater treatment plant. Council, what's the purchase pump for the mix? When I say new, I forget. Don't realize it's already been in operation for a little over two years. Um, but we've lost one of the pumps in the mixed liquor. Uh, they're a very large pump, hard to get. And the one that went out, fortunately, it was covered under warranty, but we do not have a spare to sit in there to, to in the event that we need to operate at 100%. So we're requesting the purchase of another one at a cost of about $60,000. And this will come out of the uh, maintenance money for the wastewater plant. Questions or comments? Questions. So when we buy this new one, the one that's going to get replaced will become the backup? Perfect. What's our lead time? And the rebuilt one is even coming back. It's one of those we'll tell you when you order. <laughs> I'll make the motion. Second. Um, motion a second. Please vote. Motion passes 4-0. Okay. F2, Ward of Engineering design services in response to the RFP 2022-07. Good evening, Council. Um, as you may already know, the city has secured funding under the Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality Improvement Program for the construction of a Class 2 bike lane on Aiden Boulevard from Villore to Austin. Um, we released an RFP for the design. We received four proposals, and after review, rec we recommend uh, to award a contract for the design to all C engineering consultants for in the amount of twenty thousand two hundred forty dollars. And I'll stand for any questions that you may have. Is this for the striping? For the thermoplastic bike lane. So we're paying lane. them twenty thousand dollars to tell us where to put paint. For the design of the bike lane. Okay, so in layman's term, to tell us where to put paint. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, this this has got to be a California thing. I mean, we have a line out there already, don't we? We do, but we not only just um, designing on AutoCAD, it's also the aerial. Um, aspect of it, and then we get all the data as well. I know it's not you. Um, that's what that was going to be my question. Is is this before that for that? Um, just to make sure that it's done the right way. That is correct. Okay, is that not something we can do in house? Uh, I don't. I we don't have the uh, capabilities yet. To do so, 
we will uh, in the future once we get the license for the uh, drone and then we can scan it and, and get the elevations and all of that, but not right now. Once we get that, we're going to be good. We're going to save ourselves a little we bit. We can save a little bit of money on that. Awesome. Yes, that is correct. Do you have any professional engineers on staff that could stamp blinds? Not, not on staff. Um, that would not require, because uh, we're not going to be changing anything on elevation. So it's, <laughs> it, it's merely just a quick quick design. But we have on-call consultants that we can hire like for normal stuff. I mean, we can design in the house, and we can give it to them for review, and if they can stamp it. Hard work. Motion to approve. Second. Motion oh, second. Please vote. Motion passes 4 0. Okay. F3, Board of Engineering Design Services in response to RFP 2022 08. Um, Council, as, um, as you may already know, we secure funding through the uh, Surface Transportation Block Grant program uh, for the for the rehabilitation of uh, in Boulevard from below the way to SR 86. Uh, we released uh, an RFP for the sign. Uh, we received three proposals and after review, uh, staff recommends the work of the, con of the contract of extra engineering in the amount of $37,534 and I'll stand for any questions that you may have. Questions, comments? Sorry, I don't really noticed if I may. Their bid is half the amount of everybody else. Um, are we going to come in with change orders to meet up with everything else? Because, it, I mean, I can take it, you know, five, ten thousand dollars This is over half. Right. No, and, and we have uh, we have conversations with the uh, the engineer. We, it was a red flag as well. But we worked with them. Um, the same situation came with when he designed uh, Dockwood Rehabilitation a few years ago. And he was kind of like the lowest uh, of all, but he was very successful with no change orders. Take a motion to the board of engineering design services in response to RFP 2002-08. Second. Motion and second, please vote. Motion passes 4-0. Okay. Uh, F4, Bureau Police Department Equipment Purchase. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The item before you is uh, to is for authorization to purchase equipment for uh, patrol and our investigations unit in the amount not to exceed <clears throat> 12000 The equipment purchase is going to better help uh, not only serve the public, but help our officers and, in, and in our investigations unit. I'll stand for any questions. Questions, comments? I'll make a motion. Motion a second, please vote. <laughs> Motion passes four zero. Um, F5, Improvements to Sunset Park. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, good evening. Um, staff has put together a PowerPoint uh, to show council proposed park improvements that will that uh, will be categorized on our budget as subject to funding and a few that have current funding availability. Uh, this presentation reflects the current needs of the residents in the Sunset Ranch community Staff is seeking City Council direction on which of the following projects outlined to fund. Staff is also seeking that City Council approve to seek bids if uh, the, the option chosen is uh, needed for a bid. So um, with that being said, we'll go ahead and dive into this. I don't know, I was feeling colorful that day, I guess, in the background, but... <laughs> Cute, Tony. So... These are the current amenities we have right now at the park. Uh, we have two softball fields, 
uh, one tee ball walkways with lighting, um, shade structure with the picnic table, a basketball court, and a playground structure that uh, it goes from 2 to 12. So uh, these are the proposed options, and I'll kind of talk about it a little bit uh, in more detail as we go along in the slides. Um, so the fitness equipment is a possibility. This, these are the, these are the projects. Option one and two are the projects we'll be. We're always actively seeking funding for it, whether it's from a grant or uh, other sources that we don't currently have funding for. It, similar to what we kind of did in Paseo, I think we can, uh, if we get some funding, uh, whether uh, through a grant or other source, uh, we can do something similar up on the. Is it on the east side? Where the volleyball court used to be, so that that's an option that we're we're going to be actively seeking funding, and you you might see it on the budget as a line item uh, subject to funding. So just so that you know that we're, I'm all, I'm constantly looking through state of California and other sources for for these for these types of projects to fund in our general fund parks. So the option two is obviously we have softball fields. So lighting, uh, lighting, uh, and and the and, and the cost estimate here you see is phased. So phase one would be the largest field, which is a northwest field, and that comes in. And this is all in. This is a turnkey construction, uh, materials, everything. So for one phase, it's three hundred five thousand. So you know it's it's not a cheap option. There is, there are other options for lighting. Um, some that are not regulation, uh, similar to what we did, or Public Works kind of helped uh, with the parks uh, that they put the lighting. That's an option too, but they're not. Uh, they won't light the entire field. So, so this is this kind of give you a preview of what it costs uh, uh, to light those fields. So we're coming in a little bit, about a hundred, uh, six hundred thousand dollars. But, but if you do phase one, two, three at the same time. So and this is you know top of the line. This would be Musco. They've done a lot of projects here in Imperial County, and and um, this is LED uh, upgrading of the electrical uh, and all the work that that goes along with all that. So, this is one of the projects that we do have uh, fund and availability for, and as you see, this is kind of calculating at uh, uh, ninety five dollars a cubic or a yard of material. In a sense, we would turn in these turn these fields into red clay. Uh, we already have irrigation infrastructure in the fields, and we would basically turn the entire fields to red clay, uh, and just keep them watered down. And then, as the leagues use them, they would drag the fields and keep them in uh, usable for play. So this is also uh, th this we can fund all at once. This would be an in house. Application obviously we need some additional drainage over there. We need to regrade uh, as you as you saw the last storm. Uh, we held quite a bit of water. Uh, the the grading has changed over time, so we would be uh, in a sense seeking public services help uh, to regrade and then adding some additional drainage and drainage boxes within the fields and off to the sides, so that in the case that it does flood, we can actually put in a suction hose in the drain boxes and not uh, in the mud. So this and and again, you know, these are these are calculated at the highest cost per yard. Uh, once you start buying material in bulk, uh, this cost can go down significantly. So the last one, obviously, uh, we have two playground structures out there, uh, and I do believe with uh, the amount of money we do have through ARPA, we would be able to shade both of them. And the shade would be similar to the to the fitness equipment. Not something as uh, uh, nice as Eager, but something like we did over the fitness equipment at Paseo. So this is calculating the construction or the installation. This is why we're also asking the, to, if you pick this option, um, to potentially go out to bid for installation. And again, these numbers are Higher than when the, the market is currently because inflation is uh, 
as you're well aware, is constantly changing. Uh, prices are constantly fluctuating, and it's not downward. Uh, they keep going up and up. Right now, the cost of a shade about this size is in the $20,000 range. But, you know, we want to give ourselves a little bit of room because, like I said, prices are constantly adjusting. So the, uh, option three and four are what we're seeking your direction on today, uh, what the council would like to see move forward. And I'm, I'll stand for any questions if you have. I like the baseball. I, I, like, the, I like the red clay. Um, so my question with the red clay, let's say we do get the rain like we did again this couple seasons. Um, what is it going to do to that DG that we put in there <coughs> or the clay that we put in there? So this is, this is why we have to obviously regrade first. That's the first thing we're doing out there. Uh, before we invest in any type of material that's going to go in those fields, to prevent uh, uh, and kind of prolong the life of this investment, we want to regrade and add those additional drain boxes so that we can pump that water out as quick as possible to the, what is it, the east, the southeast corner. So uh, I think that if we install those mitigative measures beforehand, this clay would, would last uh, quite a bit of time. But we have to really lay in the groundwork beforehand before we even talk about red clay, we have to put in the additional drainage and regrade. Where does that water go? So from the storms? Yeah. So the water, maybe Jack, but so in the park itself, the okay. water goes into, we have one drain with a sump pump in the southeast corner of the park. So if the grade is the right way, and as you all know, after a few storms, the grade is not what it was when they first built the place. So uh, it puddles in uh, mostly in the southwest field. Uh, and this last storm, it really held quite, quite, quite high. So we had to go in there and actually dig a hole in the mud, sink, that, sink those uh, lay flat hoses in there and pump it to the drain because the grade was just, it's not there anymore. So... We only have one outlet for, uh, uh, for a drain in that basin. For operational? Yes, yes. So, uh, Down about half of it. so in this case, we there's there's a, I don't know, there are 12 by 12, there are 12 by 12 boxes that you can lay in the ground to put the suction line in. Uh, and we would essentially put those throughout in, uh, a few of them in the field. So when we recreate the grade, we're going to have a point to pump out of. So then when we pump, we're not, we're not having to, uh, we're not having water sit there. We're pushing the water out if we need to. But like I said, regrading is going to be the, the, the key component here. Uh, pushing the, the, that grade towards that south, uh, I'm sorry, the south uh, uh, east side so that uh, any additional water that's sending, we're able to pump it uh, almost immediately. Let me ask another question. In regards to that, the grading and how much you have cost here of 100 and, or the amounts that you have in here, mm -hmm. is that including the grading or is that just the material? So the, the material costs are obviously high. I like to give myself a little bit of a, of a cushion. Uh, like I said, prices are constantly adjusting, but when you buy in bulk, they go down. So, yes, uh, I know Jackie and, and Public Services had bought in a, a machine that was, was able to grade uh, the basins, I believe, about a year about a year or so ago. That, so we we'll be, would be working with them. Uh, obviously, it's staff time, so it would be an in-house. We just coordinate that effort with them. Everything else we could do in-house. The hauling of the material is going to be done in-house as well. This doesn't mean that later in the future we can't add lighting to it. No. This just means that we have something that doesn't look like... Yeah. Without... I just know. You know. Right. Yeah. Who else?
Precipitation falls to the north. Hot. October. And we and we can. Uh, so in in the, in the case that it does go that way, like Jackie said, we we have limitations, obviously, but we can we can talk to the so anybody that we have that that we work with on a regular basis, whether it's Pyramid or somebody else, maybe they want to have something where they make a donation to our nonprofit, and they do some work for us, uh, and that and then write it off. So these are these are things that we're going to be looking at to kind of offset that type of work. Uh, where it's on a larger scale, we're going to actually utilize our nonprofit to kind of get uh, a solicit uh, donations for actually just labor and, 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 and equipment. Tony, is there any way? This lights up the pot. Oh, and and I knew that that question was coming. So <laughs> I have I have a, a public services sent me over some information of some of the lights and poles that we used for the other when we did the other three the three parks right sunset was one of them. So there is less costly options, and I think uh, with me calculating a lot higher than what the actual cost is, there's going to be room for that. I don't want to promise what I can't deliver, but I know that it's gonna, we're going to have some room to do some other things there outside of just the clay. I, I'm currently... I light. Um, I can actually buy a pair of those for six hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So when you consider two lights, six hundred bucks, if we just get up the poles, um, heck, I'll I'll buy the lights if somebody would just wire them into a pole because it's it's imperative that we get some lights from folks to walk. I that's something. It's been twenty one years. I've wanted lights out there. It needs to be some lights on that. Just a little bit, just so folks or little kids can go out there and kick ball or whatever during the summer when it's really hot. It's kind of tough to be out there in the sunshine. We did it, but we're, we're stupid. You know, kids, they are a little smarter. They can play at night under lights. It's a little simpler. So I'd like to see that. Other thing, everything else looks really yeah. good. And, 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 and like I said, we're, 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 we left some room in there for some other things. things. Um, and we're, we're going to look at those things also because you are right. And on that west side, uh, it is pitch black. Um, I mean, dark is an understatement. I think it's it's black. It's pitch black. So uh, we'll see what we can do. I know there's some options based on the uh, figures that that uh, Jackie and his and his uh, team sent me over uh, that we can possibly do to light that up a little bit more. Those those lights are really bright. Those 1200 watt LEDs are. I mean, if you put two of those up, you would be surprised what it would do for that park. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, uh, we found them on Amazon. I just need some yeah. so I can. Are they mount? Beginning of COVID, they told us it was going to take three years to get them, but now you can get them, and you can get them through Amazon. So, Mr. Mayor, what, what I would ask is, is as we go through this, and whatever council direction is, is is in the motion that's made. Um, to to state obviously the option selected and give us direction in regards to the lighting. What we'll do is is get the specs and the numbers, and then we'll bring it back for ratification. So that way, that way it's at your discretion. Yep. I'll make the motion. With lighting. Second. Okay, I'll motion a second, please vote. Thank you, Tony. It's really nice. Yeah. And I like your bright colors on there. 
Okay, that was good. Somebody did. Motion passes, 4-0. <laughs> it was cute, Tony. Manifesting. Okay. F6. One last thing, okay. Mayor. We, we do, do have, have a second, second part of the authorization to seek bids for the construction and installation. Uh, that's it. with the option that was chosen. Uh, we, we don't have to act on that, so we're good. Okay. F6, Community Development Department Safety Standards. Council, California State Senate Bill 296 was approved by Governor Newsom after the California State Legis Legislature found and declared that code enforcement officers are disproportionately at risk for threat under uh, due to the nature of their obligations. Um, under this bill, each, each jurisdiction is required to develop safety standards to ensure that the best interests of the officers performing these types of duties are considered. Um, this safety, as part of the package, you can see the um, safety standards uh, that were put together in conjunction with um, community development staff, city manager's office, as well as police. The safety standards covers the purpose of the manual, uh, your code of edit ethics, the policies and procedures, the goals, and the safety concerns, safety equipment suggested. And I'll stand for any questions that you may have. They put this in layman terms and what do we have here? We have, um, so we have to develop something that in the nature, so you can see the, in the backup, um, there's a matrix for you. So uh, we identify um, threats, um, you could say, and under those situations, what type of equipment um, a, we will require our uh, inspectors as well as code enforcement officers to, to wear. Um, you have um, the, the purpose of this manual is not so much to be punitive. It's more of a, an educational program. We want our officers to be out there in, in, in seeking compliance, teaching our citizens how to uh, um, comply, how to maintain their properties. Um, you name it. So um, with that, we have the suggested equipment as well as the suggested um, uh, training. Okay, and what what are you talking about as far as equipment? So if you look at the suggested equipment, we have uniforms, and what we are trying to uh, change is the uh, appearance of the court enforcement officer as well as our, our inspectors. Uh, we want to go from the uh, uh, police looking um, to a more uh, approachable uh, uh, manner. Uh, we want them to wear um, a more professional attire, like, you know, polos, um, these type of shirts uh, and whatnot. We want to stay away from from uh, the batch, so from that perception. Uh, we don't want the, our inspectors and court enforcement officers look like a cop. Um, that's the idea. Of, of the code enforcement and the safety manual as well. I like the idea of the educational part. It's good for our residents to be educated on uh, different violations and let them know what the procedures are. And that's the so I, I like that. I don't normally like anything that Gavin Newsom does, but this one I guess is okay. So any questions or comments? Yeah, I actually, I got a couple of them. So, given the nature of what the uh, code enforcement does within the city, sometimes we know that uh, residents can be pretty upset and things can happen. Um, so he's supposed to take care of himself how? Uh, with goggles, shoe covers, gloves, a hard hat, earplugs. There's no safety measure for him to take care of himself. <coughs> we have three other cities within Imperial County that have code enforcement. They have means to manage and take care of themselves. Uh, even the parking enforcement in the city of El Centro and city of Calexico have means to take care of themselves, and they're just writing parking tickets. But yet we have our personnel that go out and go before other people that might be upset for whatever reason it is, but has what? What are we doing to take care of him? And I think, Mr. Marita, we had this conversation before, and I think that one of the big things is is that 
comes up to me is we need to find ways to protect our staff. But at the same time, we need to find ways to protect our residents. So how do we meet and go to the happy median here? One of the things that <clears throat> community development did in arriving at the, at the recommendations is that it looked at, at some data in terms of the sort of situations that our code enforcement officer uh, in, encounters. Uh, and one of the things this law did is that, in, um, unlike in so many other instances, it, it left decisions about that to, to local control. It wanted us to engage in, in that analysis. But at the end of the day, it leaves to us decisions about what measures uh, to implement. <clears throat> you, you, you mentioned uh, Calexico and El Centro is having code enforcement. <clears throat> My sense is that those jurisdictions would have data that would support uh, the notion that that uh, in any given situation their code enforcement officer might encounter uh, uh, situations that might uh, uh, put them in, in some sort of jeopardy uh, for their physical safety. Frankly, when I looked at the information that we have in our situation, I did not. I did not see that, and and so my my sense is, uh, and I I would think that <clears throat> this is an evolving situation, uh, and, uh, and hopefully <clears throat> we don't arrive at a situation where our code enforcement officer is engaging uh, uh, folks that might be dangerous, whether they're homeless or otherwise. <clears throat> uh, what I what I've been told. Uh, is is that uh, with with our code enforcement officer, if there if there is a sense that there may be uh, a situation uh, of that sort, uh, they he, uh, uh, community development works with the police department, uh, and so the the indeed police are engaged. Uh, <clears throat> my 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 sense is that in El Centro, that situation arises on a regular enough basis that their code enforcement officer indeed looks more like a police officer. At least from where I sit at this juncture, um, uh, my thought would be to pursue uh, more of, 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 of like uh, what this council did uh, during COVID with respect to uh, uh, information and education. And, uh, and I think those goals are more readily achieved by someone who is uh, uh, looks like what Mr. Moore described in terms of polo shirt and and that sort of thing, as opposed to having a more tactical look. We may come back to you at some point in the future and say that uh, uh, we have we now have data that would suggest we we need to do something different because certainly um, I, I recognize the city's obligation not only with respect to code enforcement, but all of our employees in terms of protecting them. And so we, we take measures, for example, with the folks in the library and, and coach them on what to do in, in any given circumstance should people enter uh, the library uh, that uh, uh, engage in behavior that uh, uh, puts them in fear for their safety. Um, so. Um, I think the recommendations that are before you fit our situation, and, and, and but I'm not going to sit here and be naive enough to say that that won't ever change. But let me ask a couple more questions. In regards to the suggested training, what does ICC stand for? The International Code Council. Okay, and CA, CEO? California Association of Code Enforcement Officers. Okay, so all these trainings are suggested. How much of this training does our staff have? Because if I remember, uh, PC course 832 is what? 832 is arms and arrest. Okay. Yes. Um, HAZMAT obviously is hazardous material, right? Report mm -hmm. writing. Joint enforcement for warrants, compliance and, ins and inspections for basic safety protocols. Drug awareness, mental awareness, situational awareness. Uh, effective communication. Uh, code official safety specialist. I mean, these are all things that, don't you guys take some of these? Yeah. We give them the training, but here's a business card and a hat. 
nothing to protect themselves. I understand that we're not as big as Calexico, we're not as big as El Centro, we might not have those problems, but I'm still looking at it as a safety issue when something happens. But that's my two cents on that. I would like to ask a question. Do we work in concert with the code enforcement? Yes, we do. Okay, so... I don't believe it's the right for a code enforcement officer to escalate a situation. If he knows, should he escalate the situation? and that's my point, if it gets to a point where it's out of control, there shouldn't even be discussion. The police department should be called in. And then I don't, I mean, I might be wrong on that, but I think that again, it's back to um, education on all sides. And I think sometimes people need to see that we have people coming there that's not going to escalate it because sometimes people will escalate something if they see somebody that, because I don't believe, I, I think that they, and I might be wrong in how I'm saying this, but the word officer on code enforcement, I have a problem with that only because they are not a police officer. And there's a fine line there. And in my opinion, if we have residents that feel very uncomfortable when somebody comes up and approaches them and they think they're an officer and they're not, that can escalate it. This was, and I'm part of this because I've had several people approach me about this because they felt threatened. And we shouldn't have any resident in this community threatened by anybody, period. But my point is, if something gets escalated, if I was a, a code enforcement person and I saw that it was getting out of whack, I'm calling the police department. I'm not even going to argue with it. I'm not going to discuss it. We're going to do this. That's the right thing to do. Am I right or wrong? Okay. So, okay. Any other comments or questions? If not, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Please vote. Motion passes three with one no. On to F7, Imperial Public Art Program. Good evening, uh, Mayor and members of the Council. Uh, the Imperial Public Art Program and before you is to be adopted, if you so wish, by Resolution 2022-75. Uh, the Imperial Art District Committee that was established when the Council declared certain parameters within City's town site um, as the art district, if you will, um, did meet and review this program. Uh, what we're hoping to do with this program, it's and it is done with a very broad brush, so I say that where it has a little bit of some futuristic things, it's not solely concentrated on, for example, murals. Uh, we do talk about all the things of public art, such as mosaics and sculpture installations and things like that, um, but it is to promote and facilitate the display and therefore kind of enhancing quality of life, exposure to public art, but setting the parameters in which it is done within the city. Um, so the, the program before you is to um, work with local, regional, and some national artists, depending on, on the themes or what the direction is from the council at that time. Uh, we'll showcase themes unique to the historical significance um, with very specific themes for the area. The program identifies specific buildings and uh, significant buildings and significant sites uh, within the district as it stands right now. Obviously, we can amend as we look to broaden throughout the city, depending on what that is. Um, significant sites are um, areas within the city's control, so whether public right-of-ways, maybe sidewalks, whatever it might be. Um, and then significant buildings have uh, quite a bit of exposure to uh, large areas such as Highway 86 or, fr <laughs> or front-facing uh, Imperial Avenue. Um, the uh, recommendation from the art committee um, was to adopt this program. Uh, but we are going to convene again and identify some of the significant buildings, for example, um, and 
determine that those should have a common theme. Um, so that way the, the large canvas areas, if you will, kind of have some consistency throughout and then we will do a call for artists for all of it. Uh, the art committee will determine who those artists should be and we will recommend those to the council as we go forward. Um, the council did approve uh, $10,000 in uh, cannabis monies to be established for the seed uh, money of this program. Um, you do have the option, I just say that, to adopt the program without the funds, if you will, um, or if you wish to proceed as budgeted, we can do that, and I'll stand for any questions that you might have. So the funding um, at the time, uh, the art committee is determining uh, what their final recommendations for solicitation of art would be. Um, that would be to procure uh, supplies and materials, for example, certain murals in certain areas. Uh, we would work with the artist uh, to procure those materials, um, or it could be for the installation of a very specific uh, piece of art. That will be at the council's discretion. Mm -hmm. By the artist up to yes um that was yes so to the city um so that is a futuristic <laughs> approach um at the time where we are uh far advanced and i would say our parklets for example within our town site area meaning um turning our our dead ends that are adjacent to 86 into open space um, what we hope for in that time period is to also have the installation of significant sculptures, if you will. And in essence, those pieces of art are on loan to the city. They are subject to the terms and agreement that would be signed with the artist. Um, but if because of their placement within our community, um, it expedites, say, the sale of that, and it's a significant amount um, because we do go through the process of installing it, of doing basic maintenance on it, then we would be entitled at, again, the council's discretion, up to 20% of that sale at that time. Mm -hmm. Coachella? Um, there's some similarities uh, there. Uh, that was a little bit more um, isolated and discretionary. So this this would allow for those, though. Um, so if you're familiar with some of the art areas um, in uh, Escondido or in Coachella, uh, some other areas, uh, Temple City, um, those those types of art programs. This is kind of a combination of all of those, and then localized to what we as staff would recommend for our city to to follow. Would this include a welcome to Imperial sign? It could. <laughs> if, just uh, bringing if... that up. <laughs> My buddy here. He's been working on it for about four years now. <laughs> there, there's, there's a multitude of, of what it could be part of. Yes. This is great. I was trying to get us a vote. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, James. You're welcome. I make a motion to. Okay. There you go. Got a second. Motion a second. Please vote. Motion passes four zero. F eight, two thousand twenty two California building codes. Good evening, Council. Um, this agenda item before you is to adopt the twenty twenty two California building code and to amend Chapter six of the City Municipal Code. Um, every three years, California mandates all cities and counties to adopt the new code. Uh, California. Adopted the new code on July 1st of this year, and will the new building code will be uh, be effective uh, January 1st, 2023. Um, so, and then staff's recommendation for this is to approve and to to introduce the first reading and to amend the chapter six uh, to add the 2022 California building code. And I'll stand for any questions. Comments. Motion. Make a motion for, for number one, introduction, first reading by title only of ordinance number 
823, amending Imperial Mun Municipal Code, Chapter 6, to adopt 20 2022 California Building Codes. Second. A motion and second. <clears throat> Robert, you go through. The first yeah, part yeah. on make, that, number one, Patrick's I'll motion. Make, make a motion to approve the, uh, to provide directions <coughs> to prepare a summary for ordinance uh, 823 for public, uh, publication purposes. Second. Motion and second, please vote. <coughs> okay, part two passes four zero. Thank you. Cody. I have to tell you, the other day uh, I saw you, but I don't think you saw me at first. And I was listening to you talk to those gentlemen. You do a really nice job talking to the guys that were doing the electrical work for Starbucks oh, on the thank inspection, you. but very professional and did a really good job. Just wanted to commend you on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Let's move on to F9. Um, man, I love this one. This one's uh, between myself and uh, Miss Eugenia. We both campaigned on this, and this is going to change Imperial. So, um, F9 beautification of Highway 86 between 2nd Street and 15th Street. Mr. Mayor and members of the council, um, before you, you have the uh, proposed authorization to purchase and install materials along 86. Um, we do have the design here concentrated between 2nd and 15th. Um, we do believe that we will be able to stretch that in some of the cases, for example, that, that I know Tony had mentioned an example with Sun, Sunset Park. Um, the biggest uh, points that I do want to make with this is um, obviously as we continue our efforts to secure funding for the major infrastructure improvements, um, we will not be uh, doing anything that is wasteful in planting our vegetation. So I say that meaning we're not planting this to rip it out. Um, it will be done in a way that either one, it could be relocated once the infrastructure improvements are going in um, or in the areas that are going to be immediately improved at some point, we won't have the trees planted there. It'll be more of the, the gravel and the boulders that we can excavate and move out of there. Um, quick point of clarification, the amount, the backup of the monies that was submitted does include a very broad scope of infrastructure improvements as well. So just to clarify, um, Tonight's agenda is just to promote the beautification monies, which is the nine hundred and ten thousand, um, and not the three point six grand total that you see there. Um, as much as I would love to say we have that and we can move things forward, um, we do not, and so we're still working to secure those fund funds for that. Um, the the large elements that we have again is uh, the soil remediation. Um, that we will, or soil amendments that we'll have to make there along the medians, um, and then some of the, the drainage installation so we can obviously get water to the vegetation and, and sustain it in that capacity. What you're looking at from a landscape perspective, if you're familiar with um, parks, uh, eight and road improvements and the trees um, there, and then some of the, the improvements along the bike lane and how that vegetation looks, but we will be choosing our plants selectively because we want to ensure that it's low maintenance um, and desert scaping, um, but it's all sustainable. And I will answer any questions. No, this this is specific to the medians. The top. Yeah, the medians. this is specific to the medians. There are some areas where we'll be able to do the tops, but again, we want it to be sustainable. And if ultimately our goal is to underground that, um, we want to make sure that we do it in a way that that we can relocate what we move, but still increase the attractiveness to the area, um, promote that connectivity, and really kind of enhance our economic development efforts with that too. Oh. This goes through today. What is our time frame? Hmm. Next week? Right. No. <laughs> um, we will uh, meet a staff and get a timeline together, a awesome. realistic one, because obviously securing the materials that it takes, um, as well as finalizing the irrigation design, which is something that is within the purview of our consultants that are already working on the 86 Vision Blueprint. So they're already hard at work. They're just waiting to see what happens this evening and and but we can provide that exact timeline as to when we get those materials 
that's going to dictate it. I have my comments for next. Oh. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Vote. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Look. Hey. Let you do this one. That's okay. You know, it's, no, it's no, your... no, no, no. <laughs> We're all a team here. This is awesome. Thank you. Motion passes for. A F10 establishment of full time classifications and ranges for the Imperial Public Library. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, in an effort to uh, streamline efficiencies and um, improve just kind of the organization, we've noticed some areas that we can make improvements in, and that would be creating uh, full-time positions that are currently part-time. Um, so before you have for the establishment of a full-time literacy coordinator um, and a full-time library assistant position, um, this would be a budget neutral impact uh, in doing so as we move forward and, and trying to improve our, our customer service and quality of service for the library. I'll stand for any questions. Questions, comments? Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, so we have two, two motions or it's one? Better. If you would like to, you can read it as one motion. It's up to you. Um, and do one action or take it separately, however you would like to proceed as a council. Let's take them up, sir. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the establishment of full time literacy coordinator classification at range 75, the MSPC salary schedule. Okay. I have a motion and a second, please vote. So, number one passes <clears throat> for zero. Make a motion to uh, establish the full time. Uh, Library assistant classification at range 60 of the Teams for Local Union 542 salary scale. Second. Motion and second, please vote. Motion passes 4 0. Okay. Okay, we'll go to F11, uh, the Red Cops funding resolution. I have one more before that. You do? Well, they'll be, yeah. So, <laughs> real quick, I'll make it brief. <laughs> um, the uh, F11 is for the Impu Imperial Community Grant Program. Um, so, Mayor and Council, what this is before you, um, in, a, in a method to establish, if you will, um, support for the community in very specific areas, um, at the discretion of the council and at the setting the priorities as a council. Um, we've written the Imperial Community Grant Program to, in essence, create a grant from the city and allow for an open solicitation of applications. That would be nonprofit organizations could fall into um, certain special events. But what it does is it establishes a very specific criteria um, for accepting those solicitations it goes through a review process and what comes before you as the city council to ultimately get funded and i will stand for any questions that you have ultimately come to the city council oh absolutely so this is a a dual part as far as the city council we establish the um, priorities of the city council the amount of funding you wish to be in the program um, and from there, we set the metrics. Um, it goes through a rigorous review process. We'll do an open solicitation. Um, it goes before what is established as the Development Review Committee to do the initial scoring and grading. Um, it then is brought to the Ad Hoc Committee, which consists of two members of the City Council, two members of the Planning Commission, and go through the applications that way for final review and recommendation for awards to the Council. What is a review committee? The Development Review Committee is an established committee that consists of all the department heads within the city. And when I think of a grant, I think it's somebody asking for money. Everything involved. So it's the community asking the city for money when we don't have them? So, for example, the community grant money um, in other jurisdictions or for ex when the council is asked to, say, sponsor a local nonprofit. Right now, we're not doing correct none because of it. it would be uh, to do so without a set schedule or parameters to award that money. Um, 
you it ultimately would be a gift of public funds. And so by establishing a program that is competitive and transparent, you are able to weight support you're able to weight how you support those organizations based off of the criteria that they meet. They have to apply each year. It's not something, um, the way the current program is written is you do not um, apply for multiple years. Uh, it's, it's a one time, but whether it's a, there's four categories specifically, um, and they are the uh, economic development, so um, which is to uh, promote the city of Imperial um, for local dining, shopping attractions, um, promote growth and sustainability, uh, social services, um, there's parameters within that, uh, community pride and placemaking, and then as well as arts and culture. And so we will set specific grading grids that the council dictates with the priorities of what they are. And those are the metrics in which the Development Review Committee will review the applications that are received from the open solicitation. And then we bring it forward through the process for the ultimate award by the council. So this will be only open like for a couple weeks every year? That is what, it, the way it's currently written, we can divvy that up if you wish to have a quarterly or maybe um, two times a year open solicitations. I would recommend if that's the case, we do one at the approval of the budget and one at mid-year budget review. So you have a, a biannual type of solicitation and award um, allowing for that. Can we do it every, can we amend it to every quarter? We can. If that's if that's and that's what this is. Any any changes so we can write it for every quarter. Every quarter would be nice because let's say you know some of these team sports come up and they mm -hmm. they they come up quarterly and I mean to me that that would be it. So yeah, um, should I make a motion um, of approval of resolution two thousand twenty two dash seventy six establishing the city of Imperial Community Grant Program with the amendment to the resolution that says. Um, the open period is it will be awarded quarterly. Second. Make a motion. Second. Please vote. Motion passes four zero. So now do we go to another one? So now we have twelve, <laughs> not 12. eleven. Because it's eleven on the other one, so go ahead. Table that item. <laughs> I apologize to throw this one on you guys at the last minute, but here it is. Uh, we we're made aware of additional COPS funding in the amount of $69,304.82 uh, for the Imperial Police Department. Uh, we have to claim it before December 31st or it goes away. So that's why this was added on uh, such last minute for you guys. And this will probably fund the item before. <laughs> Make a motion to approve. Second. A second, please vote. Motion passes four zero. Yeah, um, gonna adjourn this meeting, uh, City Council, until the next regularly scheduled meeting, Wednesday, December twenty first, twenty twenty two, at seven p.m. Thank you.